Hi everyone. In case you're new here, my name is JJ. I've been a full-time software engineer for almost two years now. If you're curious, want to know how I got into this field, check out this video over here. It should be to my left or to your left. So without further ado, let's get onto the topic of today. I want to share three tips for new software engineers. There's a lot of tips out there on the internet. I did some Googling. There's just, there's just so many, but I just want to share the ones that I personally resonate with my favorites that I consistently work at every day. This can apply to anyone who's going to their internships, they're graduated from a boot camp, or someone's first job straight out of college. So without further ado, let me get some Starbucks first. we're back. Unfortunately, we finished the food and the drinks in the car and we had to run a couple of errands afterwards. So I don't have the food with me or drinks. So anyways, let's move on to the first tip. My first tip is to develop mental models and connect the dots instead of jotting down lots of notes. Now that might seem contrary to popular opinion where you should write down notes if you're at a new job and you're trying to learn new information. So let me tell you about a story where I used to work with a coworker who jotted down lots of notes. They asked a question and I answered it and they would write a note. They had sticky notes on their desk. They had notebooks with notes from questions they asked. And I initially felt confident that this person would be able to, they were understanding the answers that were given. But over time, the person would ask the same questions over and over. And I was confused. Didn't you write down those notes before? And you could go back and reference those. And it turns out that a lot of the notes that were written were kind of scattered and weren't interconnected together. Let's say you're trying to understand an API call from end to end. You have a mobile app, and the user clicks on a button and it takes you to another page and that page needs to get data from the database. How does that whole end-to-end -end work? This might be intimidating if you're in a new language, framework, or new code base. So how I would approach this is if I had a notebook or a whiteboard, I would try to draw shapes and arrows that symbolize or resonate with me in some way. So what you could do is you could have the front end represent with a rectangle and then the back end might represent a circle and then the database could represent a cylinder and depending on what files are in each place the front end back end or the database you could draw a rectangle and write a couple of files with arrows connecting to between them so you know that this file will lead to this file and then you draw an arrow to go over to the back end and then it goes to the database and maybe you'll write down the table name. And then when it returns the data back to the front end, you draw arrows coming back the same path. The second tip I have is to ask questions when you're stuck. Yeah, that might sound a little cliche. You know, of course I'm gonna ask questions when I'm stuck, but at the same time, I know everyone wants to be independent and show that they can accomplish and complete tasks that their manager assigns them. And you might have past internship experience. You could have worked on the big capstone project. You might have worked on campus at a job where you did some coding work. And we believe all of that with our resume and our classes we've taken, we should have some experience and we should have some sort of knowledge to be able to complete these tasks. But you shouldn't get hung up on yourself because you might be working in a legacy code base or you might be dealing with proprietary tools that your company works with and that you shouldn't be expected to know these right out of the gate. Now, wait a second, JJ. If I ask too many questions, the other engineers on my team are gonna think I'm annoying, which this transitions really well into my next point. Let's say you were to switch shoes with the engineer that you're asking a question. What is considered an annoying question? What is considered too many questions? If I were to be thinking like that, I would say if you were to ask me a question and I say, what have you really done to try to unblock yourself or problem solve to fix a solution? Hey, have you tried A? Have you tried B? Or what happened when you tried C? And you're not able to answer those questions, then this shows that you haven't done enough research or independent troubleshooting into your question. 
So let's say you're asking a question to a senior engineer and it's a, it's a medium blocking issue that you're running into and you've tried a couple things and you just want to know if there's something else that you haven't tried that someone with more experience could help you out with. So you take your question to the senior engineer and their first question is going to be, hey, have you tried A or B? And you'll say, yes, I've tried both and neither of them work. And then they might say, well, have you tried C? And then you'll say, yes, I've also tried C, but this happened like that. So then the senior engineer is going to be curious. They're going to be like, okay, A, B, and C didn't work. Now I might need to use my skills and my experience to help with unblocking your issue. And if you get to this stage of the question asking process, then you've asked a good question. And I would encourage you to ask as many of these type of questions because these are challenging the engineers and it's not something where they can give you a one word answer or they can point you directly to the resource that you should have looked at before you asked the question. My last tip or advice for new software engineers is to not only understand error messages that you run across, but why the error was thrown. An error message is a template with variables that you're working with, files, and especially the if condition. It's if this happens, then throw this error. So if you understand the first time you run to this error that this was thrown because of this if condition, this is the cause of the error. When you run into this error, inevitably, a second or third time, you can think about the first time you ran into the error and if that was the cause, you can use that cause to help you troubleshoot your issue and give you a head start in finding where the source of the error was thrown. So those are my three favorite tips and pieces of advice for new software engineers. They honestly work really well together. The better you debug errors, the better questions you ask, the more solidified your mental mappings of new languages and frameworks will become. As you become more experienced down the line, you might look at a new framework and say, hey, I'm trying to figure out how these asynchronous functions work in XYZ framework, but I've used them before in ABC framework. So I can apply the parallels between ABC and XYZ to understand how they work in this new framework that I'm working in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click down below to subscribe for new software engineering content. Drop a comment down below what are your favorite tips for new software engineers or any that help you along the way in your journey in software engineering? Until next time, see you in the next one.